Amen, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Welcome to day one of our April fast. We're excited to be. Who's excited to be up at 4 a.m.? Yeah. We have all day to just bask in God's presence. Prayerfully, you'll be able to take some time aside. But without further ado, I want to go straight into Thanksgiving. Psalms 100, verse 4 in the Message Bible says, Come to, the, um, come to God with the secret password. Thank you. It's my favorite version of Psalms 100, verse 4, that there is a secret password that you can come to the presence of God with. And that secret password is thank you. So today we're going to raise an altar of thanksgiving to God. We're going to, um, one of my favorite things to do when I do thanksgiving to God is to go through his name and to thank God according to who he is, right? And you don't have to do this. It's just a thing that I do. So, for instance, um, I may say for Jehovah Rapha, or you may say for Jehovah Rapha, that's God who heals. And you begin to thank God for the healing that you're believing God for, even if you don't see the physical manifestation of that yet. Or you thank God for healing somebody that you love. Or you thank God for healing somebody on social media that maybe has just been telling their story. But whatever you do, you just raise an altar to God of thanksgiving for him healing you, healing your mind, healing your heart. I want you to dig back in the past for something God did for you 20, 30 years ago. Because one thing I know about God and one thing I know about just this Thanksgiving in general is that sometimes when you get into um, worry or anxiety or fear or depression and you begin to think that God has forgotten about you, one thing the Bible says about David is it says that when all of his um, whole family, everything he had was stolen from him, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And one way to encourage yourself in the Lord is to go back to how God healed you when you were in childbirth, how God healed your body when you were in sin and God showed you mercy, when God healed your mother, when God healed your father, when God healed your children. You know, it's easy to forget and and believe that God has forgotten about you today. But when you go back and you remember all the times that God never forgot about you, it really increases your faith in that area. Um, The same thing about you know, Jehovah Nissi, who is our banner. And what is a banner? A banner goes before you like a parade. And that banner holds up a sign that says victory. And so before you went into that meeting, before you went into that, you know, to get that doctor's report, whatever it was, in the realm of the spirit, Jehovah Nissi, God, our banner, went before you and raised up a banner that said victory before you even got there. And so you want to thank God that whatever is waiting for you in the month of April, whatever is waiting for you for the rest of 2023, that the banner of victory has already been risen up before you and is gone before you and you're just following in that. Um, whatever, whatever God did to defend you or protect you this month, you know, unfortunately we all saw about the school shooting for that elementary school, and I think it is so disgusting And that's just not what you guys may think it is. It really is correlated to the abortions because I've been speaking about how there is a deliverer taking that that is either here or being born. And because the devil is not omnipresent, he's not all-knowing, he's not everywhere, he does not know where this baby is. And so he's like, just kill all of them five years and under. And so what you saw was a manifestation of the King Herod spirit, right, or the Pharaoh spirit that is trying to kill this deliverer that is born in this generation. And so I want you to just um, uh, just lift up a thanksgiving that your children are safe, that your children have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that they're, thank God that their school has been covered by the blood. Just thank God that the, the freak accident didn't hit you, the bullet didn't hit you, the, the car didn't hit you, the deer didn't hit you, the things that you didn't even know were scheduled for you never came to you because God defended and protected you. I want you to thank God and raise up a thanksgiving for his perfect peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, God will, give, God will leave you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. What does shalom shalom mean? Because that's what perfect peace is. Perfect is shalom, peace is shalom. It means peace from all war. It means friendship. It means prosperity. It means health. 
And so God is going to keep you in all of these things when you keep your mind on him. So you just want to thank God for his shalom, shalom, his perfect peace over your life. You want to thank God for Jehovah Sabaoth, God of the angel army. Psalms 91 says that the angels of the Lord keep you from dashing your foot up against the stone, that he literally has angels charged over you and your children to make sure that you don't hit anything that you're not supposed to hit. So we want to thank God that the Lord of hosts, God of the angel armies, has kept us safe even in ways we could never imagine. I want you to lift up your voice and thank God for being your way maker, that God has made a way for you out of no way, that even in impossible situations, they are easy to God. The Bible says that he makes um, rivers in a desert and paths through a wilderness, that what seemed impossible to man, what people said would be impossible to you, that the doctor gave you a 1% chance that you would ever have a baby. I don't care if you don't see this now. One of the um, supernatural things about God is that you begin to thank God for what you can't see yet. And remember, we're going to God like little children, and when your child comes to you and you promise your child that you would go to an amusement park, and they keep thanking you and say, thank you so much for taking me. And you might not, you might have forgot, you might not even have the money for it, but you're going to find the money to go get your baby to that amusement park. And they keep thanking you as if you've already done it. And the Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does God in heaven know how to give good gifts to you? He is not a wicked father. And so we're going to thank God for being a way maker, for making a way out of no way, for what they said was incurable, for what they said would never happen to you, for what they said was impossible. We thank you, God, for making a way out of no way. I want you to lift up your voice and thank God for being Jehovah uh, Jireh, God who provides for you in all the ways that he provided for you going back to 20, 30, 40, even 50 years ago for some people. I don't know what you need to thank God for right now, but I'm going to open up the prayer line and we're going to be going to thank God. Thank God.
In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. I want you to go all through today with Thanksgiving. I want all today for you to raise an altar to God for Thanksgiving um, in every category. I don't know how if you noticed how easier it was to just really magnify God, extol God, and give Thanksgiving to God, past, present, and future for the things that he has done, for the things that he is doing, and for the things that he's doing in the future. Um, this is day one of our fast. We are fasting today from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., whatever your time zone is. No food. We're abstaining from all food. Um, that is the biblical definition of a fast, and we are taking water only. A few people emailed me and said, can we take coffee? Can we take um, tea with no honey, no sugar? This fast is a no food fast, water only. Before 6 a.m., after 6 p.m., we are eating raw vegetables and fruit only, raw vegetables and fruit only. Um, God has been talking to me about our fast. We've been corporately fasting for a few years now. And one of the things God said is that we will never see a move of God unless we do things on one accord. And one thing I noticed about us is that we do things uh, according to how we feel like doing it. And so if you are Googling raw vegetables and you're trying to make beans a raw fruit or a raw vegetable, um, that's fine. You just have to eat your beans raw, which is very toxic to do. And I do want you to know that all of these things that you're trying to do that goes against this fast is literally a spirit of rebellion. It's a spirit of disunity. It is not the spirit of God. God is a God of unity. God is a God of people doing things on one accord. And if you are joining this covered by God fast, he has given us a strict set of instructions for this specific fast for a specific reason. Now, one thing, other thing I've learned about God, because I don't know half of the things about God, because God is God, right? His ways aren't our ways. His, his thoughts aren't our thoughts. Well, one thing I do know about God is even when we don't have the full instruction, following God's instruction is for provision and it is for protection, even if we don't have the answer right now. Now, somebody asked me, why do I think personally God is calling us to our raw veggie and fruit set, um, uh, after we don't eat for a certain time? And I just believe that um, his body is sick physically, right? His body is sick physically. Anytime you go to a church and you call an altar call, Half of the church gets up and comes to the altar call because something is wrong in their body, whether it's something in their eyes, whether it's something, the fibroids in their body, whether it's the arthritis or the inflammation or the aches and the pain. His body is sick. And I believe his body is sick is because of what we're eating, the processed foods, the processed sugars, all of that. And you pray and pray and you beg God to make your body feel better. And you go back in your kitchen or you go back outside and you go to junk food and go right back to the poison that was killing you. And I believe that when you fast, you know, fasting outside of prayer is one of the most powerful tools to heal your body. The issue is after you fast, you go right back and you put the same food that killed your body back in it and you literally neutralize the good effects that was just done. And so I believe that God is tired of y'all neutralizing it with poison and still begging him for, um, for a healing and, or call, emailing me saying, Tiffany, I've been praying and fasting, and God still hasn't healed my body. Well, I believe this is one of the reasons God is doing this. And so raw vegetables and fruit, guys, is not rocket science. Go to the store and get some lettuce and make you a salad for the next three days. Get you some raw bell pepper, some raw broccoli, some raw everything else that goes into a salad, right? This is not rocket science. Don't make it rocket science. Get y'all raw fruit and vegetables, and that's just that. Um, we're not going to focus on what we're eating because a lot of us have a habit on focusing on food. You start posting on social media the food that you're eating, and that is really out of order. The Bible says that when Jesus was tempted of the devil, when he went into a 40-day fast and the devil said you should eat, Jesus responded back by saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we're technically substituting physical food for spiritual food, right? We're strengthening our inner, our spirit man with the word of God, which is food that will strengthen us in this hour. And so uh, I just encourage you, if you're going to post on social media, I encourage you to post more of the word of God than you do the food that you're eating, because we do have a generation of people who, have, who do not fast the biblical way of fasting, because 
you know, we've just given too many excuses and, and all of that thinking that you can't do it. And I'm just a firm believer that until we fast the biblical way, we will not see the signs and miracles and the wonders that God wants us to see. This is why I believe in Matthew 17 and verses 14 through 21, he says, this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting, that there is a certain kind of demon that does not leave your bloodline without prayer and fasting. And if you are not fasting, which is to abstain from food for a certain period of time, the biblical way of fasting, and you're, here's the thing, here's what I think is so powerful about this. The Bible says that in Matthew um, chapter 17 um, and verse 14, and when they were come to the multitude, there came a certain man kneeling down to Jesus and saying, verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic. He's sore vexed, and oftentimes he falls into the fire and he falls into the water. So this this kid had gone crazy. Verse 16, he said, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And verse 17, Jesus said to them, you faithless and perverse generation, how long should I be with you? And I think in that moment, Jesus, of course, was disappointed with his disciples because these are people who have walked with him. These are people that followed Jesus, right? And he called them faithless. What is a faithless person? It was defined as these were people that did not have trust in God, right? And, but it also meant not to be trusted. And it also meant unbelieving. So if you are faithless, you don't trust God, but it also means that you are one that's not to be trusted because you've been compromised. The word perverse means, this was so powerful, because he called, he called them a faithless and perverse generation. The word perverse means a plot against the saving purposes and plans of God. That means that when you don't have faith in God, when you have lost your faith in God, you have actually plotted against the saving purposes and plans of God. Perverse also means to turn from the right path. It means to be morally corrupt, and it means to distort. Anytime somebody's vision is distorted, right, it means to give misleading or a false account of something. This is what it means to be a faithless and a perverse generation. Um, let me go back to what I was reading. Then he says in verse 18, Jesus rebuked the devil, right? Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of the child, and the child was cured in that very hour. The disciples came to Jesus and said, why couldn't we cast this um, demon out? And he said, because of your unbelief. So the fast that we go into is not for God to do what he promised to do, because guess what, y'all? He's already done it. The healing you're looking for, that you're fasting for right now, the deliverance you're fasting for right now, pop, stand up, get up. The 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 uh, success that you're looking for right now, the, the breakthrough you're looking for in marriage right now, it's already done. The fasting we're doing is for our unbelief. That's it. The fasting we're doing is to take away all distractions, take away everything, all the noise, shut it down, and say, God, it's just me and you. I need you to fill my faith tank back up because if you've already done it by proxy of who you are and who I am, I have to see it like in this hour because if this lunatic boy can be cured in the same hour, surely you can cure me. The Bible says in verse 20, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, and I want you to look at whatever your situation is as a mountain right now. You shall say to this mountain, which means that God is expecting you to speak to your mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Verse 21, how be it this kind, this kind, I want you to circle that, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. I want you to understand that according to Ephesians, there are certain levels to demons, right? You have principalities, you have powers, you have rulers and wickedness in high places. I butchered that scripture, but I believe that's in Ephesians chapter 6, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we know that there is a 
a hierarchy in the kingdom of darkness. And the disciples likely did not have the um, uh, the uh, the rank is the word I'm looking for in the realm of the spirit to get rid of this demon. They did not have the rank to get rid of this demon. But how many of you know that fasting gives you the rank that is needed to get rid of this demon that you were not able to get rid of all of your life? That's what this rank is for. And so when you look at the when you look at what the Bible says, um, this kind only come out by prayer and fasting. I looked up the definition of the word this kind, and it means offspring. It means nationality or a descent from a particular people. It means generation or kindred. What does this mean, y'all? It means that there is something in your bloodline or something in your nationality or something in your offspring that the enemy has a chokehold on. It has become a stronghold in your family. For you, it might be a cancer in the family. This kind can't come out. This cancer cannot come out, but by prayer and fasting. These strokes and heart attacks and aneurysm in your bloodline can't come out, but by prayer and fasting. Um, Some of you may have, uh, somebody emailed me and said, most of the women that give birth die in, in childbirth, y'all. That is a principality. This kind can't come out but by prayer and fasting. You might have a, a bloodline riddled with divorce, no marriage, late marriage. This kind can't come out but by prayer and fasting. You may have um, molestation and incest and, and sexual perversion and homosexuality and lesbianism in your bloodline because that stuff runs in the family. Even if you thought you were keeping your child safe, if you were molested and your uh, mom was molested and your grandma was molested or grandfather and grand, that thing is coming to your child, but this kind cometh out by prayer and fasting. I don't know what your kind is. It could be arthritis in your bloodline. It could be failure at the, at the brink of break, breakthrough in your bloodline. It could be a spirit of poverty on your bloodline. I don't care how many people you saw go through it. It could be a hundred people in your bloodline that gone through it, but you will be the one that it will not touch because this kind goeth out not, but by prayer and fasting. And so this kind means it is part of your bloodline that today God is going to break. And the Bible said that this child that was throwing himself in the fire and water was cured right away. So we're not looking for, you know, some people say, well, it, it took a long time to come. It's going to take a long time to leave. Um, success with God doesn't take time. Success takes God. And so we're believing God for these things to go out. And we're believing God for a cure to happen in the same hour. Whatever you're believing God for, we're believing for it to come in the same hour. Another thing I want to just tell you about fasting is you don't tell anybody you're fasting. Now, obviously, I'm doing a corporate fast, so you have to see me talk about it corporately and out loud. But you guys, unless you're inviting somebody to fast with you, you do not want to make a public spectacle of your fast. Or the Bible says that that is the only reward that you're going to get. You know, some people, whether you know it or not, have this spiritual thing that you want to get a pat on your back and you want people to know that you're more spiritual than you are. And God says that that's the only reward you're going to get, the pat on your back, the congratulations, the, oh, wow, you're very spiritual. That's, that's it. You can, you can go ahead and quit your fast right now, cross out everything you're believing God for, because the Bible says that's the only thing you're going to get is the applause of men. However, he says, whatever you do in secret, God is going to reward openly. And so when you're fasting, y'all, if somebody says, are you hungry? Did you eat today? Just say, yes, I've eaten. Because it's not a lie. You ate the word of God. You ate that as food, as health to your flesh. You took it in, you chewed it up, and it has become health to your flesh. You're not lying when you said you've eaten because you ate. Um, I want you to write down one to three things that you're believing God for for this fast. We're not going to take up a lot of things that we're believing God for for the fast, just one to three things we're believing God for this fast, um, and um, and that's it. So our next prayer point, I want us to um, just open up our mouths, and we're going, we're going to begin to pray about repentance. Repentance is a lifestyle. This is not something you do when you get saved and you feel like you don't have to do anymore. You should be repenting every single day because every day we do something that really makes God upset with us. Second Chronicles um, chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, he says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, right? I want you to read this on your own. But he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, 
right? One of the things about fasting, it is humbling yourself. That's all it does. Fasting is humbling because God does not hear the prayers of the proud. So we humble ourselves, or in other words, uh, we bring ourselves under subjection to God. We bend our knee to God. The Bible says we shall humble themselves. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is pray and seek God's face. The word prayer here means to intervene. So whatever you're believing God for, you're coming to intervene on your own behalf for God. The word seek my face means to search out in worship and in prayer. And I'll be sending out, you know, a song to worship to for today. But when you seek God's face, you do it in worship and in prayer. And he says, and you're going to turn from your wicked ways. He says, if you do those things, if you humble yourself, you pray, you seek God's face, and you turn from your wicked ways, then, and only then, will he hear from heaven. And he will forgive your sins. You're going to get a pardon. And he's going to heal your land. I looked at the word healed. It means to cure. It means to be repaired. It means to be made whole. So I want us to open up our mouths, whatever you knowingly did, whatever you unknowingly did, whatever your ancestors did. I want you to just lift up a, a, a repentance to God. And I'm just going to open it up, but we're going to be doing this all day long. But right now, whatever it was, you could have um, bore a false witness against somebody. You could have gossiped about somebody. You could have... Um, you know, talked about somebody because you didn't understand what was going on. You could have judged based off of appearance and not according to righteous judgment, which is you going to God, seeing if everything was um, God about the situation. You could have lied. I don't know what you need to repent for, but I need you to open up your mouth, repent for, um, um, repent for, you know, masturbation, repent for pornography, repent for having, you know, uh, wicked thoughts against somebody, bad thoughts against somebody, repent for gossip, repent for lying, repent for, a uh, perversion of any kind. Open up your mouth.
Jesus, amen. Our next prayer point, we want to just lift up a prayer and ask God for mercy. I want you to, whether when things are going good, you ask God for mercy. When things are going bad, you ask God for mercy. But I just want to ask God for mercy. One of the definitions of the word mercy is the word clemency. And we know that like in legal terms, but clemency is defined as a process by which um, a governor or the president um, may reduce a defendant's sentence or grant a pardon. Um, and so we often hear it when, maybe where the death penalty is um, is put into play, where somebody is granted a clemency, which means that he's granted a pardon for whatever the sin is, and um, there is a forgiveness of the crime. And so we're just going to ask God for mercy. To show, God is rich in mercy. God is an abundance. Uh, uh, abundant in mercy. So I want you to cry out for mercy right now. We want to thank God and cry out for mercy over our children. Show us mercy in our life. Show us mercy in our marriage. Show us mercy in our health. Show us mercy in our body. You know, wherever we've committed these sins of not treating our temple right, wherever we committed these sins of putting um, processed food in our bodies and in God's temple, wherever we've committed the sins of not teaching our children the word of God, wherever we committed the sin of not stewarding our marriages with wisdom, wherever we've committed the sin of not stewarding our money or, or the things that we beg God for, we're just crying out to God right now for mercy, 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 wherever that is, whatever the topic is, cry out to God right now for mercy. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Our next prayer point, I heard the Lord say he wanted to cancel um, some appointments. He wanted to cancel appointments. Now, whether these were appointment, appointment with death, appointment with disease, appointment, you know, some, um, some curses are time relief. And so you have some curses that are generational curses. These are things that we've been diligently breaking over the last year or two. Some are more stubborn than others, depending on what's in your bloodline, depending on, you know, some people that are on this fast have come with generations that were known high-level Satanists, high-level voodoo priestess. And so those uh, covenants are probably a little bit more tougher to break albeit nothing is impossible to God and nothing can be broken. You also have some curses or covenants that, you know, come from a line of uh, believers. And so those covenants are a little easier to break because of, um, uh, because of the line of praying grandmothers and grandfathers in that bloodline. Uh, whatever the case, the blood of Jesus can break anything. Um, but there are some things that are generational, some things that are, time sensitive, right? And so what does that look like? That looks like at the age of 50 years old, um, you know, a heart attack is scheduled for you. Um, as a matter of fact, some of you may even heard about, you know, obviously I get thousands of emails, but I hear a lot that people say, Tiffany, you know, at 50, um, all of the men in their family die of a heart attack and they're 47 and 48. And as the time of 50 is approaching, they get horrified, right? The spirit of fear now takes place, and wherever the spirit of fear takes place, um, it is an open door for that attack to come over their life. Or um, before, the, before the age of maybe 16, all the girls get pregnant at, in the teenage years. Or before the age of 35, everybody gets a divorce. Or, you know, you kind of get where I'm going. These things are time release. Or in other words, there's an appointment for death. There is an appointment for disease. There is an appointment that once you reach a certain age or a certain um, breakthrough in your life, this thing is automatically time release and it's like a ticking time bomb. What is an appointment? By definition, an appointment is an arrangement to meet somebody at a particular time and place. It is also defined as a meeting set for a specific time. And what does canceled mean? The word canceled by definition means an announcement that a planned event will not take place. Ooh, that, uh, that's, that's good. It's an announcement, which is what we're doing today. We are announcing that a planned event by the enemy will not take place. The word cancel by definition also means to neutralize and to nullify. This is actually the Google definition of the word cancel. It means to neutralize and it means to nullify. And we all know, we all know what neutralizes and nullifies. It is the blood. The word cancel by definition also means to rescind or to cancel a contract. It also means to put the parties back to the position as if the contract had never existed. This is just a regular definition of the word cancel. It means to rescind or to cancel a contract. What is an evil covenant? It is a contract. Putting the parties back to the position as if the contract had never existed. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 15, behold, they shall surely gather, or in other words, they will surely gather together um, at, as, an appoint, as an appointed time, but not by me. God is saying they'll gather as, with an appointment, but it won't be by God. Whosoever shall gather together against you will fall for your sake. That is scripture, and that is a promise from God. Anything, anybody gathering against you will fall for your sake. Colossians um, chapter 2, verse 14. Uh, I want you to read this on your own time in the Amplified, in the ESV, and in the Message Version, because I thought it was very powerful that it says, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 14, it says, Uh, all sins forgiven, I'm reading the message ver version, all sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, uh, that old arrest warrant canceled and it's nailed to the cross. That old arrest warrant is canceled and nailed to the cross. The ESV says by canceling the record of debt that stood against us, 
with its legal demands and nailing it to the cross. So these things are canceled. I just want us to lift up our voice right now, and I want you to begin to cancel any death decree over you, your children, your marriage, any divorce that is scheduled to happen at the 15th year, at the 7th year, at the 2nd year. Cancel any disease, any cancer that was on its way to you um, when you turned a certain age or when you got a certain accomplishment. I want you to make an announcement right now. Heaven and earth is recording it that the appointment with death, the appointment with divorce, the appointment with cancer, the appointment with that heart attack, the appointment with um, abortion, the appointment with miscarriage, the appointment has been canceled. Lift up your voice and begin to pray.
In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Make sure you go through the rest of the day praying about that as well, just canceling every appointment. Whatever the Holy Ghost brings to your mind, I want you to just begin to cancel it. And our last prayer point for today is to um, reveal. I just want you to lift up your voice right now and ask God to reveal anything to you that needs to be revealed during this fast. I want you to ask God to reveal to you anything, anybody in your life that needs to go. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you know is not of. I want you to ask God, reveal to you anybody in your life that needs to go. I want you to ask God to reveal anybody in your life that you need to bring closer. I want you to ask God, whatever the situation is that you need clarity on, that that you just are really in a state of confusion about whether you should move or not move, whether you should marry this person or not marry this person, whether you should be in this position or not this position, and you just feel like God isn't speaking. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, which is the fasting scripture, the fasting chapter, he says, after you do all these things in your fast, then your light shall break forth as the morning. The word light here means light of instruction, light of instruction. This means that whatever you're asking God for that looks dark right now, God is going to illuminate it and show you your instructions during this fast. Um, It also means the light of prosperity, and oddly enough, it means herbs, H-E-R-B-S, which I think is fascinating since we're eating raw vegetables and fruit. Um, And so I want us to lift up our voice, just take 30 seconds right now and ask God specifically, be very specific to reveal to you what you need to see in your specific needs. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And before we take communion, I just want to ask that you would lift me and my family up in prayer just for about 30 seconds. Whatever the Holy Ghost is telling you to lift us up in prayer for, I just pray that you would pray right now. Amen, amen. The replay for this um, will be on YouTube. Give it me, give me about five or ten minutes after this is over. It'll be right on YouTube, so you can come back and listen to it. And please, all throughout today, today is a wonderful day. Most people don't have to work, and um, just take time and go through this. Um, you know, on the hour, every hour, go through Thanksgiving, right? Go through repentance. Go through um, asking God for mercy and go through um, praying the prayer of canceling every evil assignment, every appointment with death, every appointment with disease, every appointment with divorce, every appointment with failure, every appointment with confusion, whatever it is, I want you to begin to um, cancel that appointment. The Bible says that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cancels it out. It's the blood. It's the blood that neutralizes and nullifies. So we're going to appropriate the blood of Jesus Christ to act as a neutralizer and a nullifier to cancel anything that was assigned and appointed for you that was evilly appointed. Evilly is not a word, but evilly appointed to come your way. Um, We're about to take communion right now. 
Um, and again, remember that before 6 a.m. and after 6 p.m., we are taking raw vegetables and raw fruits only. Um, just go to the store and get some lettuce and make you a bountiful amount of salad for the next three days, right? And so take your communion. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we apply the blood and body of Jesus Christ to, the, to our lives, the life of our family, our safety, our finances, our ministry, our work, and everything that pertains to us. With the blood of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus, we break every curse. We break every hex, every witchcraft and enemy assignment against our lives. And we declare that every evil thing right now falls dead to the ground and it bears no fruit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lose your holy protection over our lives. And we decree right now that everything that pertains to us is hidden in the secret place of the Most High God because we dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lose your healing. Um, we lose your resurrection, life, and power. We lose your joy, your peace, your righteousness, and your perfect shalom over our lives. Nothing is broken and nothing is missing in our lives right now. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.